So depth first search, time. Uh, M is the uh, maximum depth. So instead of being B to the D, it's B to the M if that's the maximum depth. Linear space, it's complete if the depth limit is past the solution depth, otherwise you're hosed. And you're not guaranteed to find the optimal solution. Breadth first search, B to the D, B to the D space, ouch, 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 ouch. Yes, nice, uh, except that like when in the real world does everything cost the same? Like, I don't know, not in my world. In my world, going downstairs is much cheaper than going upstairs. Um, and as I get older, the differential increases. <laughs> um, so, so uniform cost search, very nice algorithm, highly recommended. Um, it's admissible, it's complete, but it, it does have this ouchiness associated with it right here. And for those people who have still no respect for finite numbers, let me just show you the next slide, which is trying to reinforce the ouch. Um, so this is for uniform cost search or breadth first search. If you have a branching factor of only 10, so it's like way less than chess, not to mention Go, uh, you're expanding 1,000 nodes a second, 100 bytes per node. To go out to depth eight, it takes like a day and 11 gigs. This we can do with today's hardware and my patience. But like if we want to go to depth 12, it's like, oh, ouch. Yuck, this is bad. Um, so we're going to talk about ways of making stuff fast. But this space thing, like, no, I'm not going to buy Matt an 11 petabyte machine. I'm just not. There, I know a guy who has access to a machine that has like two terabytes of RAM. Um, it's a supercomputer. And not only is it two terabytes, but the process, and you might think this is lame, but the processor has no first level cache. And you're like, ouch, the processor has no first level cache. In fact, it doesn't have a second level cache. The processor has no cache because that entire two terabytes of memory is one cycle away from the processor. It's two terabytes of L1 cache. <laughs> this is a nice machine. This is a nice machine. This machine was purchased by a US agency whose budget is classified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really nice machine. I someday maybe I'll run on that machine, but um, so this space thing, this space thing is serious. So we've got to do something to cut down on the space. We've got to do something. So what I want to leave you with for the end of class is it really, do we really not have any more time? That clock, uh, that clock is, clock is uh, not accurate, actually. So we do have time. OK, you guys are now going to solve this problem for me, because we have time. Yeah, I'm now going to create more time. I think Superman has to fly around the Earth a few times in order to really make it work. There we go. OK, um, how are we going to fix this? We've got breadth first search that's complete and admissible, which is awesome. And we got depth for search, which totally sucks. It's not admissible, it's not complete, but it's linear space. How can we get the completeness and admissibility of breadth first search and the linear space of depth first search? Say more. Mm -hmm. For D, and it was, and D increases by one. If this was 1984, you would be publishing a journal paper in the most prestigious <laughs> journal of computer science, introducing an algorithm called iterative deepening. Right there. Um, so this is a really clever algorithm. Uh, just like Nathan said, you, do, you have a depth bound. You do depth for search to level D. And if you don't find a goal, you increase the depth bound. And if you don't find a goal at level D, when you go to level D plus 1, if you find a goal, you know it's optimal because you've tried all the things at D minus 1, or you know, the, the previous iteration, and you didn't find a goal. So, and all the time, you're just doing depth first search. So you only have linear memory. So we have linear memory and we have admissibility. 
Now, are there any problems with this algorithm? I mean, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant, but it does have some little gotchas. I think I'm going to require you to implement this algorithm on assignment one, aren't I? Yeah. It's a good algorithm to implement because it's, it's just magical. It's just, I think it's just magical. Jonathan. Um, you can skip B to N or any number of greater spaces times two. Mmm. Okay. If you want to, if you want to save a little time at the beginning. Yep. Okay. Now, wh what, but what are some fundamental flaws of this algorithm? Adam. Yep. Yep. Now let's talk about that for a sec. Let's talk about that for a sec. So um, now you're increasing the depth bound, and these trees. Oh, I'm not supposed to write on the whiteboard. Whew. Almost made a mistake there. Uh, Every time we increase the depth bound, the number of nodes we visit grows how? Exponentially. So if we have a branching factor of b, we're going to have b times more nodes on the next level. b times more nodes. So uh, the question is, how bad is that? If I've, if I've now searched up to this depth and I decide to look at the next depth, I'm going to have to redo all this work because by the time I've finished enumerating this tree in depth first search, right, I'm here and this is my current search frontier. So I've lost all this work. So in order to go and expand this node, I have to go back to the root and then regenerate all these nodes in order to generate those two kids. How bad is that? How, how, how unhappy am I? Let's, let's, let's figure this out. So there are going to be twice as many nodes at this level as there are in the previous level. How many nodes is this up here? Well, let's see. This next level here has half as many nodes as the previous level. Let's, let me just draw a little picture for you. So let's say that um, at the lowest level, we've got that many nodes. That means at the previous level, we've got that many nodes. And at the level before that, we've got that many nodes. And the level before that, we've got that many nodes. The level before that, that many. And then that many, the very top. Now, how, for those of you who have a head for Formulas, you probably remember a formula for the summation. For those of you that are like me and can't remember a formula to save your day, um, let me just show you a little trick. We're going to take all these folks here and line them up over here. So this, this line right here is half the length of this one. And this one is half the length of this one. So if I take this over here, it's going to come about to there. Right, halfway to the end. Anyone remember Zeno's paradox? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this guy right here. That's going to come halfway the remaining distance. This one here, halfway. This one here, halfway. Adding all of these up is going to make this line here almost equal to this one here. here so the sum of all the preceding levels is actually the same as no greater than the final level. In general, the cost of, of regenerating all of this is at most equal to the work you do on the last level. So the overhead of doing all this iterative deepening is actually bounded by a constant factor. Let me show it to you in math to see if that makes it any easier. Here's with a branching factor of 10. Um, at depth D, there are 10 nodes. In the previous levels, there's one node for a total of 11 nodes. Iterative deepening, in order to explore out to level 1, has to do the first level and then the first level and the second level. Right, so it's doing 1 plus 11 is 12 nodes. 
to go down to depth two, where there are 100 nodes, in all previous levels, there are 11 nodes. In this next level, there are going to be 100 more nodes, so for a total of 111. Um, iterative deepening is going to have to have done this and this and then that for a total of 123. So the optimal search is going to do this many nodes. Iterative deepening is going to do this many. And this is the percentage of this over that. And you can see the percentage is actually, it grows fast here, and then it's starting to level off. Um, it levels off at, well, it's, it, in the worst case, when the branching vector is only two, it levels off to, to uh, asymptotes at two. Here it's going to asymptote to, I don't even remember, but it's uh, like a third or something. Anyway, much less than two. The overhead of iterative deepening is surprisingly small, thanks to the property of exponential growth. Dan. It only works where the, uh, exactly, where all actions cost the same because it's going by depth. We're lowering the depth limit. 